So thanks everyone for joining us today. We're happy to have you here and thank you so much to the Wayne Public Library for hosting this event with us tonight. My name is Olivia and I am the Media and Outreach Manager at Veg Michigan. Just a little bit about Veg Michigan. We are the largest nonprofit in Michigan focused on promoting the benefits of a plant-based diet. We put on educational programs like this one a few times a month, host two large events every year, send out an informative newsletter at the start of every month, have a YouTube channel with cooking videos and more, and our newest venture is a giveaway program that encourages students and other members of the community to try plant-based foods for the first time for free. Here is our website. You'll see on your screen if you want to check us out and learn more about our work. And I've also listed all of our social media where we promote all of our upcoming events. We do monthly raffles where you can win prizes from local businesses. We highlight our favorite places to find plant-based food around Michigan and much more. So definitely give us a follow and check that out if you're interested in that kind of thing. And if you like what you see tonight and want to support our work, the best ways to do that are to either make a donation or to become a member. If you're thinking of donating, the majority of your donations will go to support our giveaway program for students that I mentioned before. Everyone who signs up for this program gets a bag packed with a delicious variety of plant-based foods. And we've already delivered over 250 bags in just the last few months and have received a lot of positive feedback. So we're really happy with how that's going. Or if you're thinking of becoming a member, the basic membership is only $20 a year and includes a ticket to next year's Veg Fest, which is the largest plant-based event in Michigan. And the $40 a year membership includes a Veg Fest ticket plus a gift of your choice, which can either be a year's subscription to Veg News, which is the most popular magazine focused on plant-based eating, or a Veg Michigan t-shirt featuring our new logo. Any support you're able to give us is greatly appreciated. And you can become a member by clicking join in the menu on our website and make a donation by clicking donate. And you can just go to vegmichigan.org, like you see right there on the screen in front of you. And now let me introduce your presenter for tonight. Chantal Singer is a registered dietitian nutritionist for St. Joseph Mercy Health Systems Michigan Heart and Vascular Institute, teaching plant-based eating and lifestyle medicine as part of the Pritikin Intensive Cardiac Rehab Program. Chantal is very passionate about plant-based eating for human health, planetary health, and animal welfare. Take it away, Chantal. All right, thank you, Olivia, so much for that introduction. Thank you to Veg Michigan and Wayne Public Library for giving me this opportunity and uh, really putting this event together. And thank you all for, for being here and learning more about plant-based eating. We've got some delicious recipes on the menu, as you may have seen already, we've got uh, the forks over knives recipe. It's a chickpea, uh, no tuna salad sandwiches. We're going to make out of them. And then we've also got a delicious uh, kale quinoa beet salad with a citrus dressing, sweet and tangy. And then we've got a side of roasted sweet potato wedges to go with them. Uh, so yeah, this is actually my first live cooking demo at home. So I'm really excited to, to be here. I do cooking demos uh, every day in, in clinic at um, in uh, the cardiac rehab center, as she had mentioned. Uh, but yeah, first time here. So really excited to show you how delicious and simple, easy, affordable uh, plant-based eating can be. Now, before we uh, get started on the recipes, I did want to give a little background to plant-based eating for those who are more beginners to plant-based eating or just kind of learning about it for the first time. So food groups, we want to include, there's actually three different types of words that uh, might be used. And so you might hear whole food plant-based, you might hear just plant-based, and you might hear uh, vegan. So uh, whole food plant-based is really what we're going for today, and that is a way of eating that uh, includes minimally processed whole plant foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts and seeds, whole grains, herbs and spices, and avoids animal products, animal byproducts, and also excludes uh, oils as well as highly processed products, even if they're plant-based. So, um, the next one is plant-based, and that one includes all the foods I just listed, except it's also going to include those more of the highly processed uh, plant-based products. So you can think like Beyond Burgers or vegan cheeses, things like that. And then it also includes oils and more sugars and um, refined flours that, that are vegan. So the other 
term is is vegan, which both of those words mean vegan. They're interchangeable. Uh, but people who uh, call themselves vegans tend to extend their compassion towards animals through also goods and services. So not just the foods that they're eating, but goods and services as well. Um, so yeah, so very synonymous. All these uh, recipes that we're making today are all, they're all vegan. They're all whole food plant-based. They're all plant-based. Uh, but I'd like to push them more in the category of whole food plant-based because uh, this is how uh, the way of eating to reduce the risk of chronic disease or even uh, treat or reverse chronic diseases. So what I do every day in clinic at cardiac rehab is uh, my patients have just come from a major heart event, typically a heart attack, and we're going for heart disease reversal. Yes, there's a lot of research that shows that uh, this way of eating, including lifestyle medicine too, so exercise, sleep, connecting with others, all that stuff. Um, but nutrition is arguably one of the most important parts. And so uh, while we're talking about all things plants, uh, we're not sacrificing flavor or, or taste at all. So I'm really excited to show you guys uh, how it's done. But the other thing I wanted to mention is that this works. I have so many patients on every week coming up um, to me and talking in one-on-one -on -one visits that they are lowering their blood pressure, getting off blood pressure pills, cutting down insulin, controlling blood sugars, eliminating diabetes, we've seen, as well as... Um, yeah, like I said, lowering blood pressure and then lowering cholesterol as well. So one of the most impressive things I've seen so far yet was just last week, I had a patient who really just went, he, he dove in all the way after his uh, major heart event. And within two and a half months, his total cholesterol went from um, 293 to 120. So that was like over a hundred, like 170 points from his total cholesterol um, in just two months. So it's, it's really powerful stuff. I really encourage anyone who is uh, watching or listening today, if you have a chronic disease, this isn't just for heart disease, it's for diabetes, stroke, Alzheimer's, dementia, you name it, it tackles at all. So if you have one of these currently, or if you have a family member who has one of these, or if you're, you know, at risk for one of these, definitely pay attention, maybe take some notes today and really take this to heart because it works and it makes a huge difference and really excited to, to get started. So First, we're gonna uh, start with the kale salad. Now, this recipe is actually by yours truly. I created it and it just makes me feel so good. Like I eat it and I feel so energized, which is why I love it, but it also just tastes really good. It's good for any time of the year. It's got some winter vegetables. We've got kale, beets, but we've got uh, a little bit of a summer vibe going on with the oranges and the, the citrus dressing. So it's perfect any time of the year. I love making this recipe for uh, lunches, just packing it into individual containers, grab and go. Uh, but you can also have it as a side dish for a meal or even a snack. Uh, so let's get started. All right. So I've got my kale here and it is uh, pre-washed. A, a lot of my uh, ingredients are pre-measured and um, pre-washed uh, because even if it's organic, so all of our stuff is organic today, but they're still allowed to put like I think there's up to like 20 pesticides that they're still allowed to use. So we always want to wash our, or rinse our fruits and vegetables for about 15 to 20 seconds at room temperature uh, water to get off any of those, you know, pesticide residues, germ from the grocery store or um, any other dirt or anything that might be on there. So I've already done that and we're going to go ahead and chop it up. So this is how it looks when you first get it. This is the curly uh, just regular traditional kale. And we're not going to eat the stem part. So you can either kind of like shuck it with your hands, but I'm going to chop it today. So we just want to chop along the lines of the stem and we can discard those. So I've got my trash right there. Now this is going to be the base of the salad, right? So leafy greens are some of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. And what that means is that uh, there's a lot of nutrition like vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals that are packed into a small amount of the food, or I guess there's for a small amount of calories too. So it's very powerful. Good to get at least one or two cups of greens in a day. And all right, so this is what we're left with, just a big old pile. I'm going to kind of bunch it together and chop it into bite-sized pieces. And it's going to break down a lot. So one thing I didn't mention yet is that 
the kale is going, we're going to massage the kale. So if you haven't heard of that, it's exactly how it sounds. We're going to take our hands in there and massage it. And it's going to become a much more palatable texture when we do that. So I'm just kind of randomly chopping here. Just want to get it in those, like I said, the bite-sized pieces. That should be pretty good. So I'll go ahead and throw it in our bowl. And it's one bunch here. It's about, uh, about four cups, I'd say. That's going to vary um, depending on what you get. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our dressing. So we want to massage the kale with the dressing because the uh, acidity of the vinegar and the uh, orange juice concentrate is going to break down those, those stems. So I have two tablespoons of orange juice concentrate here, or you can use regular orange juice or, or fresh squeezed orange juice. And that's going to give it a nice sweetness and a good tanginess uh, to go that, you know, citrus summery um, dressing. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. So it's going to give it that nice little tang, good little bite. And I've also got a little pinch of salt in there. That's optional. You don't have to add it, but um, it can help break down the leaves a little bit better. So no uh, mixing even necessary. That was all good to go. You can make uh, this dressing. If it's, if, you know, it's so simple. You can uh, just put it together uh, when you want to make it. But you can also make, it's really great to make salad dressings in mason jars and you just shake it up and then you can leave it in your fridge for like five to seven days and use it on other dishes throughout the week. So that's a good little tip. But we're going to go ahead and uh, dress this kale. All right. And I'm actually going to use gloves today. It's going to get a little messy. Uh, but by all means, you can just use your hands if they're nice and washed. And what I'm going to do is we're going to just go ahead and massage it. You just want to take big old handfuls of it. And it's going to start breaking down. And it'll be a much softer texture. So you really want to just do this for about a minute or so until the leaves are, like I said, broken down, more soft, and it'll start to get a more kind of brighter green color as well. So another great thing about kale and leafy greens in general, uh, the dark leafy greens in particular, is that they're really uh, high in calcium as well. So a lot of vitamins and minerals, but calcium as well. So really good for our bones, of course and it's absorbed really easily in these whole plant foods. All right, so we'll, we'll probably call that good enough. You could keep massaging it if you wanted, get it to a, you know, whatever desired texture you want, but we'll call that good for today. So it's got that nice bright green color that we're looking for. And that's actually gonna um, help the kale obviously absorb that dressing. So it's gonna be super flavorful too. Okay. And then it's very simple. All we'll do next is add in the rest of our ingredients. I, I actually, so this is a little bit more labor intensive. I, uh, I pre-prepped a lot of my ingredients. Um, the quinoa and the beets do need to be pre-cooked. So for the quinoa, um, I used this quinoa. It's uh, Kirkland Organic from Costco. And I love it because it's pre-rinsed. So usually you want to uh, rinse quinoa in a strainer, something like this, um, to get off any extra dirt or anything, but it's really nice when it's already done for you. So it's more convenient. And it's just uh, one part quinoa to two parts water. It cooks like, if you're not familiar with quinoa, it's, a, it's technically a seed, but it acts like a whole grain. It's going to absorb water in the cooking process and uh, fluff up to be this really nice, um, kind of, you can think of it as kind of like a rice substitute. Um, it's nice and fluffy. And we chose white quinoa. You can do red or black, uh, very similar nutrition profile, but the white quinoa is perfect for this recipe because the beets are super colorful, pink and purple, and they'll turn that quinoa pink and purple. So it's a super pretty salad on top of everything else. Uh, so we've got about a cup, maybe a little bit more than a cup actually, of, uh, excuse me, this white quinoa. We'll go ahead and add that in there. And that is, uh, quinoa is really high in protein. So it's going to fall into both of those categories of kind of like a whole grain and a protein source. Uh, it's got a lot of um, vitamins and minerals, especially iron, zinc, and magnesium. Uh, and it cooks up and just, it absorbs that water, like I said, like rice in about 15 minutes. So it's really not um, too uh, 
too difficult to make, but awesome. Um, a lot of fiber in there as well. So really filling. And next we've got our beets. So these are just classic red beets. And to prepare them, I chopped off the, uh, the top. So we took off the greens. You can actually use the greens. They're a little bitter for, um, for a leafy green, but I've had them before sauteed with balsamic vinegar. It's super delicious. So you can use that or you can save them for like a vegetable broth or something. And, uh, and once I took the stems off, I peeled the beets and then chopped them into half inch, about half inch cubes and uh, put them in the oven for 20 minutes at 400 degrees. And I let both of these cool. So that's one thing I didn't mention about the quinoa. You could make this a warm salad if you want, but uh, I, I prefer it cold. So we want to let those things cool. And we'll go ahead and add that in. That's about a cup and a half. I think um, the recipe had said... I think it had said three medium beets. I think I wanted to say three small beets because uh, we really only want about a cup or a cup and a half of those. All right, and there's a lot of potassium in beets too. So a lot of nutrition coming from um, the, the vegetables and fruits and every ingredient in this really. Uh, but potassium is awesome because it has the opposite effect of sodium. So excess sodium is going to constrict the blood vessels and make it harder, you know, for the um, blood to flow more easily. But potassium has the opposite effect. So potassium relaxes the blood vessels and helps blood flow more easily, opens up those arteries. So uh, really good to include lots of potassium. And this orange actually has a lot of potassium as well. So there's potassium in the orange juice in the dressing as well. And then uh, these, these are just typical like regular old oranges. You could use canned mandarin oranges or in, in their own juice or clementines also work as well, but I like the oranges. So I just peeled them and chopped them into bite-sized pieces. So we'll get a nice sweet uh, taste from these, of course, and lots of good nutrition, lots of good vitamin C, good for the immune system. So that's about a cup and a half or two oranges. And then next we have some raw almonds. So these are just regular old almonds and they're chopped. And this is about one third cup. And so that's gonna offer us some healthy fats and some uh, iron, magnesium, zinc, as well as some fiber, some plant protein and actually some calcium as well. So it's really important to try not to think about food as uh, you know, just carbs, fat, or protein, uh, but also as a whole package. So it's coming with vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, fiber, all that really good stuff. It's all coming in a package and it's working synergistically together. So the vitamin C actually in the uh, dressing and the orange is gonna help us absorb the iron from the quinoa. So that's just one example of how foods can work synergistically together. So we'll just throw that in there and then mix it up. So all we wanna do is just make sure it's well combined and then we'll be good to go. All right, so you'll start to see the more I'm combining it and the beets release their juices, they'll turn that quinoa a nice pretty pink or purple. Uh, so for those of you who are not experienced beet eaters, I do have to forewarn you that um, with eating beets, it might cause um, some excretions to be a little purple or pink. So don't be alarmed if you see that in the bathroom. Um, it's all normal and it's good. Um, this is a great uh, meal for keeping those bowel movements regular, actually, being high fiber. So uh, one thing I didn't mention is that we didn't use oil in our recipe. And uh, that was one key thing, one of the key differences about whole food plant-based eating versus plant-based eating is that um, it's not including oils. We don't have any oil in our recipes today. I do use oil. We do use oil in our home, but I don't use it in clinic at all uh, for heart disease reversal, uh, particularly for heart disease. It's important to keep fats to a minimum, um, including olive oil. So even though olive oil is full of, you know, monounsaturated fats, it has some antioxidants. Uh, it's also about 14% saturated fat. And so, especially for heart disease, it's important to keep saturated fat um, to an absolute minimum um, under 13 grams a day. And uh, oil is really just a pure fat um, that can uh, really add up quickly. Um, it's also not so helpful for weight management. So um, if we're trying to uh, control our weight or, or lose weight, it's uh, best to... Um, keep oils to a minimum. But yeah, so that's our salad. I'll dish it up here. And 
I wish you guys could try it. I can't wait to be in person, uh, hopefully soon in the future. And so you guys can get a taste of all this delicious food, but just a more reason for you to go and try and make it at home. All right, so we'll just give a healthy portion there to get a good view. And that is our kale, quinoa, and beet salad with a citrus dressing. All right. Now I'm going to switch gears. We'll start making our sandwiches. Yeah. Running out of room here. Okay. So this uh, chickpea no tuna salad sandwich. This recipe is from Forks Over Knives, as I mentioned. And Forks Over Knives is a documentary that actually got me onto plant-based eating. So I didn't really know much about it, surprisingly, after going through school. But in my internship, um, I watched it and it led me to dive deeper into um, all the work of some of the leading doctors of the plant-based movement, like Dr. Greger, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Kahn, Dr. Esselstein, who are really doing some powerful stuff in the healthcare field with whole food plant-based eating. Um, so definitely go check out that documentary if you haven't yet. Um, but yeah, this is just a delicious recipe. It's a staple in our house. We uh, make it pretty often. You can have it as a meal. Like I said, we're going to have it as a sandwich today, but you can definitely make it as, um, you know, just something to snack on with some vegetables like uh, red peppers to dip in or some whole grain crackers to dip in. Um, either way is, is all good. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is, so <laughs> let me turn around here. So we're actually going to start by mashing the chickpeas. And that's going to give us that texture um, that's similar to, to tuna. And one thing I wanted to mention, too, is that I have, uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I, I've been vegan for about two and a half years now, and I've been plant-based, uh, mostly plant-based for about four to uh, five years now. And... Um, so I know what it's like to transition. You know, I was raised on meat, dairy, seafood, you know, processed products, you name it. Um, so I understand how um, uh, the transition can be. And one tip that I have uh, when transitioning is to find foods that you, you know, you traditionally love that might have, um, you know, meat or dairy in it, and then just veganize it or make a plant-based version of it. Like this, um, you know, this is a spin on a tuna fish sandwich. Uh, and I used to love tuna, uh, tuna fish sandwiches as a child. So this just really gives me that, um, the flavors, the uh, mouth feel, and um, just delicious meal without the destruction of the fishing, without contributing to that destruction of the fishing industry and having to worry about toxins like mercury in, in tuna. So, all right, so we've got our chickpeas here today. And one thing I forgot is our masher. So there's actually kind of a fine line between a hummus, like a loaded hummus, and uh, the chickpea salad. And the difference is uh, you could put this in the food processor and just pulse it, and that would work too to um, blend these up. But we want to keep some of those beans whole um, for, for the right texture. So we have uh, chickpeas here, or otherwise known as garbanzo beans, and these are uh, low sodium. So Sometimes beans can have a lot of sodium in them. So if, especially if you're watching your blood pressure, um, try to go for low sodium or no salt added. Um, these are just those are, um, um, organic garbanzo beans we got from Costco. So it's low sodium right over there. Uh, but another uh, a trick you can do to get off some of that excess sodium, if you can't happen to find the no salt added or low sodium beans, is to just rinse them, uh, drain and rinse them. That's what I did here with these. But rinse them for like an extra long time. And at least 30 seconds, that can get rid of about 30 to 40% of the sodium. So... We'll uh, get started on mashing these up. I have a potato masher. I think the recipe calls for using a fork. Uh, you can do whichever one you like. I think this works a little bit faster. And beans are, of course, uh, high in proteins. So a lot of good plant protein and a lot of good fiber. And what they're particularly higher in is 
soluble fiber. So there's two types of dietary fiber. We've got insoluble and then soluble. And insoluble kind of acts like a broom sweeping through our system. And it really helps with preventing um, constipation and keeping regular bowel movements. And then on the other hand, you have soluble fiber. So soluble fiber is really important for heart health because it binds with cholesterol in our guts and helps us excrete it through the waste. So it really helps bring, uh, pull down cholesterol levels on top of helping control blood sugars, keeping us fuller longer. So it's great for weight management and it's just good for the gut. So we can, um, our gut loves fiber. So we want to feed it lots of good fiber, but on the topic of soluble fiber, um, as I mentioned, it's really important for, uh, for those who are at risk for heart disease or who already have heart disease uh, because it can help pull down those cholesterol levels. And there's an acronym we use in clinic to help uh, remind us of foods that are high in soluble fiber. So this uh, is called BOBBY and it stands for beans, oats, barley, berries, and yams. So we've got a couple of those different foods, the berries and the yams today, um, or sweet potatoes, I guess, that are higher in soluble fiber. Uh, but that's just, yeah, a tip and trick to try to get those foods in um, as much as possible for that heart health. All right, so that texture is all right. We'll go ahead and leave it at that. Give it a good stir. And then all we're going to do after that is add in the rest of our ingredients. Pretty good texture there. Now we have a few tablespoons of tahini here. So this is just plain tahini. Uh, we've got uh, this organic uh, Greek tahini I got from uh, Kroger. And it will separate. So we do, uh, this is obviously a stirred already together, but it's natural for separation of oil to occur in nut butters and seed butters. And uh, if it's not, then that's a sign there's probably some partially hydrogenated oils in there um, that are not so good for us. So we really just want to see, you know, sesame paste in the ingredients and uh, just give it a good stir. And you got some good healthy fats in there. So this is going to take the place of like a mayo or something that would be in a tuna fish salad. So it's got, it's rich. It's got, you know, a lot of healthy fats and a lot of good uh, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants as well. So there we go. We got our tahini. And then next thing we've got is a little bit of maple syrup. So this is one tablespoon of maple syrup and it's gonna be a little bit of a sweetener, give us a little sweet taste to balance out the um, savory and salty. And then we have uh, mustard. So it calls for a teaspoon and then you could put more mustard on top, but I just like putting it all in there. So we got a tablespoon and this is of the garlic whole grain mustard. So we got this from uh, Costco or sorry, not Costco, Kroger. Uh, it's got 50 milligrams of sodium per teaspoon. And um, uh, also, so in clinic, as we're doing, you know, for people with high blood pressure or hypertension, uh, you want to watch out for salt and um, different products. And if you're using a lot of mustard, uh, a good find is this no salt added mustard, and it has zero milligrams of sodium per, uh, per serving, or actually entirely because there's no salt added, but this is the organic bill brand. So good to, good to note. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put in our tablespoon. So actually mustard has some anti-inflammatory properties. So it's not just flavor, but nutrition going in there and some garlic. So that's super tasty. And then I've got a little bit of black pepper here. So that's going to be add some nice flavor and, um, and nutrition too, some good anti-inflammatory properties. And then we've got uh, capers here. So capers are going to give it a little bit of a salty taste and uh, add those in. And before I mix it all up, I'm gonna put that aside and chop the rest of the ingredients that we need. So I have one pickle here, a uh, stick of celery, and then a little bit of red onion. So it calls for just about a quarter cup of each. You can play around with those um, measurements as you'd like. And I already used my, oh, here's my knife. <laughs> so we're gonna chop these into about just bite-sized pieces unless you like getting bigger chunks of uh, vegetables in there, totally up to you. And of course, this is gonna add extra nutrition, extra vitamins and minerals. Uh, celery, fun fact, it's like 98, I think 98% water. 
So a lot of, it's obviously very hydrating and uh, it's really high in vitamin K too. So vitamin K helps with blood clotting. And now we've got pickle. So we're gonna chop up this a little finely and that's gonna give it a nice um, pickly taste. And we'll just mince it up into little, little mini pieces. Doesn't have to be perfect. I am not a chef, if you can't tell. <laughs> I took a couple of cooking classes in college, but other than that, I'm pretty much self-taught. So that proves that anybody can do this at home. And you can actually put any uh, vegetables that you want in this recipe. So I've tried before, I've done, that's a lot more than a quarter cup. So we're gonna put a little bit away. Uh, I've tried uh, carrots, shredded carrots in this recipe. I've tried uh, red cabbage in this recipe too. And it's fun to change it up sometimes. And yeah, it just changes up that crunch and that flavor and the nutrition a little bit. So, all right. So that will be good enough for our veggies. Throw those in there. And we'll put this off to the side. Well, actually, we're not quite done with it, so we'll put that back there. All right, now all we have to do is mix it up. All right, so you just wanna mix it until it's well combined. And uh, so another thing I wanted to talk about, because uh, I haven't used salt yet in, uh, in these recipes. I think there was maybe a tiny pinch in the, uh, in the dr salad dressing, but uh, I don't use salt in clinic. We use salt in our house uh, when we're here, but I don't use salt in clinic uh, because we're going for that heart disease reversal. Um, for those with hypertension and uh, high, or high blood pressure or um, heart disease, it's important for, you know, the American Heart Association recommends keeping sodium intake under 1500 milligrams a day. And then the general healthy population is more around 2000 to 2500 milligrams a day. Uh, but the average American gets around uh, 3,500 to 5,000 milligrams per day. So um, if you have no idea how much sodium you're consuming, definitely start taking a look at it and see where you're at because it can be sneaky. It can hide in a lot of different things and really add up. So uh, I just wanted to show you that we don't have to use salt in our recipes. There's still some sodium going to be coming from the uh, the pickles and the capers and um, even the beans because they're just low sodium and not no salt added. But um, yeah, just a good thing to be aware of. But like I mentioned, uh, potassium is going to help uh, counteract sodium, any excess sodium. So there's a lot of potassium in here that's going to be working um, well with that. But all right, so that is our uh, chickpea no tuna salad and it is looking delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and toast our bread. And while we're waiting for that to make the sandwich, I have a couple toppings here, um, some lettuce, some tomato, some onion. That is gonna be a good topping. So actually I'll talk about the bread as it's toasting. So we use this Ezekiel bread, it's called Ezekiel 49, and it's found in the freezer section of most grocery stores. It's a really wholesome bread. It's found in the freezer section because it's so wholesome. It doesn't have any preservatives in it or chemicals. It's a sprouted whole grain, so lots of nutrition, and it's also low sodium. So typical breads, you know, crackers, those types of products are really high in sodium. Uh, this has 70 milligrams per slice, whereas a typical bread has about 150 milligrams uh, per slice. And they also have a low sodium version of this Ezekiel bread that is, um, it's a blue label and it's zero milligrams of sodium, which is unheard of for bread products. So check that out if you do have issues with high blood pressure or um, are at risk for heart disease. Uh, that's a good good little trick. Uh, but very high fiber. Uh, so we talk about, uh, you know, bread usually gets a bad rap. Um, and there's a difference between, you know, refined grains and whole grains. So refined grains are those that are um, more processed and they don't have all the layers of the 
the grain. So when we're thinking whole grains, we've got the bran, which is that outer layer of the grain. We've got the endosperm, which is the middle layer, and then the germ, which is uh, that nutrient rich uh, center. And so with a whole grain with, you know, think whole wheat, uh, quinoa, um, barley, oats, you name it, uh, that's going to have all the whole grain intact. And we're going to get all that fiber, all that nutrition. Um, whereas when we get a processed flour product, like white, think white flour, white bread, anything like white crackers, um, white pasta, or um, white rice, even these types of foods lose in the processing, they're losing that bran layer, which is rich in fiber. And they're also losing that germ layer, which is the middle so um, the, you were left with not as much nutrition and especially not as much fiber to help regulate the blood, uh, blood sugars uh, with the carbs coming through. So definitely go for whole grains when possible. And this bread is an awesome way to get those, some of those whole grains in, in a wholesome way. All right, so uh, bread is still toasting. Oh, perfect timing with our sweet potatoes. So, oh, and our bread toasted, look at that. All right. So I, I'll talk about these sweet potatoes a little bit. I had to make them beforehand. I'll show you guys here on screen what they're looking like. Oh, pretty delicious, if I don't say so myself. We love potatoes here, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes. Uh, they make for great snacks. They make for great uh, side dishes and meals. And they're super wholesome. So yeah, potatoes get a bad rap, but they're very wholesome foods. So when you have, these are actually white sweet potatoes. If you're thinking they look like regular potatoes, um, you're not crazy. They're white sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes are a whole food. They're of course a whole plant food and they're really rich in potassium. So as I mentioned before, potassium is really good for um, blood pressure and, and our muscles. And uh, they're also high in vitamin C, vitamin A, and dietary fiber. So we kept the skin on there when I prepared them. Uh, we always want to try to keep the skin on for regular potatoes or sweet potatoes and uh, keep all that good nutrition on there. So what I did is I just cut it in half. And then after I cut it in half, I cut it into thirds. And if there were some bigger chunks, I just cut them in half again to make those thick uh, wedges. And so... Yeah, very, oh, another thing about potatoes is that uh, if we let them cool, uh, they'll create a little bit of a more resistant starch. So what that means is that it's not gonna be uh, digested, qu digested quite as quickly and the blood sugars won't spike quite as much. Uh, so that's a fun fact about um, potatoes. So even if you reheat them after letting them cool, they'll still have that resistant starch. So uh, potatoes are awesome, definitely include them. And uh, the seasonings I used for the uh, sweet potatoes were uh, paprika here. We've got paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, and black pepper, which makes for a really great kind of all-purpose seasoning and uh, super, super delicious. All right. And the other thing about the, the potatoes is that you'll notice I used uh, this this mat. So this is a silicone baking mat and it's really nice. It's obviously reusable, eco-friendly, and it's nonstick. So you don't always even have to use like a canola oil cooking spray or anything uh, with one of these mats. And they're really easy to clean and use. So definitely recommend them. But alrighty. So our bread toasted, we'll go ahead and make our sandwiches and show you guys what the final product looks like. Super exciting. All right, so I need my bread knife. And we're going to pile on, the, the recipe says a healthy amount. And so it ends up being about a half cup. And it's sticking a little bit, but that's okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna top it with some romaine lettuce and some tomato and some red onion. We've got a little bit more red onion just for some extra garnishes and some extra nutrition, of course. All right, and then we'll go ahead and we'll cut that diagonally. Oh, I wish you guys could try this, but that's what we're working with here. So I'll try to, oh, can't put it too close into the camera, but um, it, it really does look like a tuna salad sandwich and it's got all the flavors in there. It's got, you know, sweetness. It's got a little sour from the pickles and the capers, but it is, it's just delicious and I can't wait to eat it. 
But all right, we're going to add it to our plate back here. And then we'll pair some sweet potato wedges with it. Now, when we're thinking about portion sizes, uh, I never recommend, oh, I mean, actually I shouldn't say never because some people find that um, measuring and counting everything really does work for them. So if that does work for you, go for it. Definitely, there's a lot of great apps out there where you can track those numbers. But from what I've seen is that numbers often make people go crazy. And uh, we don't need to do that with whole food plant-based nutrition. Um, I recommend eating, uh, you know, mindful eating. So you can think of if you haven't heard of the term mindful eating, you probably know what mindless eating is, eating in front of the TV, um, then all of a sudden uh, the whole bag of potato chips is gone uh, without even really thinking about it. So on the opposite hand, mindful eating is uh, keeping distractions like screens, TV, cell phone um, away, not multitasking and really focusing on the food, the flavors, the textures, chewing slowly and, and thoroughly. And uh, really spending about 20 to 30 minutes at mealtimes, giving our stomachs a chance to catch up to our brain and tell us that we're full. So just listening to the body's fullness and hunger cues. And one tip from the blue zones, they say that um, it's important to kind of push the plate away when you're 80% full. That's a good uh, little rule of thumb too. And uh, but yeah, so no counting, no measuring. Uh, we just want to make sure we're getting in all the different food groups. So I have a simple plant plate I'm going to show you here in just a moment. But um, yeah, that's a good step. So one more thing, what was I forgetting? Oh, the salad, we we're gonna pair that with the salad. So these are, this is our meal. This is what we got going on. Um, super, super hearty, super filling, high in fiber, of course, right? And um, all good for all around longevity and health. Now, one other thing I wanted to talk about. So if anybody's seen my other presentation, I often um, show this uh, vegan my plate. So you can find this online from the vegetarian resource group within the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. It's a free downloadable, um, uh, yeah, right there, the vegan my plate. So the USDA has the regular my plate, but this is just the vegan version. And so it's an ideal way to set up our meals. So thinking fruits, vegetables, a source of protein, some grains, focusing on whole grains, and then uh, some source of calcium. So if we're thinking about our uh, kale salad here, our kale is going to be uh, of course, a vegetable. The beets are going to be a vegetable. Uh, fruits coming from the orange and the, the dressing. And then protein coming from, uh, actually, there's going to be a small amount of protein in all the foods, but the quinoa, the uh, the almonds, and then the quinoa is going to kind of go in this whole grain category as well. And then sources of calcium are going to be the kale and the almonds. So it's really just you've got all the food groups that you want for a meal. And then, uh, but like I said, it can be a side dish as well. And then for our uh, chickpea salad, we've got, of course, the beans, which are going to be a source of protein. We've got the sprouted whole grain bread, which is going to be in the grains category. We've got other vegetables, the tomato, onion, um, uh, uh, lettuce, and then um, uh, calcium probably coming from the beans and the sesame seeds as well. So we've got all the all the food groups we want for a meal. And then, I've, of course, we've got the sweet potato wedges, which can go into the vegetables or start to vegetable category. Uh, so for those of you who have not um, uh, downloaded Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen, I also had this here that I wanted to show. Uh, it's a free downloadable app. He uh, lists all the foods that should be included for optimal health and longevity. So those are included in a lot of our food in our uh, meals today, but that includes uh, beans, berries, fruits, vegetables, uh, cruciferous vegetables, leafy greens, nuts, seeds, and um, he also puts in grains, spices, and then the exercise and uh, beverages like water as well. And so it's a really simple and easy checklist to, to do if you're just getting started with plant-based eating. Uh, one more tip I wanted to give, or a couple more tips I wanted to give for those who are just starting out. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you can approach it, right? So some patients I find uh, in clinic, if they, they just dive right into it, uh, follow you know a, 
a meal plan for like seven to 10 days and see how you feel. Odds are you're going to feel amazing and want to keep going. But um, some people, it's a lot easier to just do gradual steps. And that's okay, too. That's actually what I did. I, um, you know, it took me about a year or two to transition to uh, fully vegan, plant based, 100% plant based eating. But um, uh, the other thing is to, yeah, do it gradually. So pick one or two nights a week where you're saying, you know, I'm going to do a plant-based meal or, you know, hundred percent plant-based meal, um, this night and just kind of work your way up from there. And, uh, it's always good to do it with somebody. So if you have someone in your household or someone that, you know, who would like to, um, eat plant-based with you, uh, and that's a really great support to have as well. So also experiment, I mean, play around with different combinations. There's like over 80,000 different plant foods out there. So there's tons of different combinations that we can make, um, experiment around, find what works, find what you like, and maybe start with these recipes. So uh, thank you all so much. I think we're um, ready for questions now. I um, yeah, really appreciate you guys being here and uh, learning more about plant-based nutrition and plant-based eating. I hope you guys make the recipes and love them. And yeah, I'm really happy to take questions now. Thanks so much, Chantal. That was fantastic. And all of that food looks absolutely delicious. I know we're all wishing we could taste it right now. Okay. All right. So the first question I see is from Jody um, asking or saying, try as I might, I just don't like kale. What other green would be good in the salad? Maybe spinach? Yeah, that's a um, great question. So first thing I want to say is that if you've never massaged kale, try to massage it first and see how you like it. But um, if you have already tried that and don't like it, don't force yourself to eat something you hate. Um, definitely try spinach in there. That's a good alternative too. Or Swiss chard or um, yeah, Swiss chard or spinach would probably be my first recommendation. Awesome. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Um, someone says, one thing I miss about being vegan is a good old fashioned tuna casserole. I'd love to know if the no tuna would be good for a vegan casserole and if you have any recipes for one or any suggestions on how to turn it into that. That is a great thing to bring up. So um, I have not tried a, a vegan uh, chickpea salad casserole or fake tuna casserole, but I guarantee you, if you uh, Google, um, you know, vegan tuna salad casserole or tuna casserole or something like that, something might pop up. I, who knows if it'll be a, you know, a hit or a miss, but um, you can always try it out. I can't say that I personally tried it, but it, always encourage people to experiment. Absolutely. Okay. Romero says, can the stems of the leafy green veggies be eaten or juiced? Like the stems of the kale, for example? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They can be, uh, but they're super uh, fibrous, so they probably won't even go through the juicer much. Um, and they're really, um, yeah, they're just really fibrous and <laughs> hard to chew. So I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, Lori just asks, what was Bobby? Uh, she said she missed the third B. She has beans and barley. If you could just repeat yeah. that acronym. Yeah, so it's beans, oats, uh, barley, berries, and yams, or sweet potatoes. Awesome. Um, okay, someone asked if, can anyone come to your clinic at St. Joe's? Can anyone come see you or how would someone do that? Uh, no, unfortunately, it's um, only open to cardiac rehab patients. Um, so unless you have a major heart event, which I hope you don't, <laughs> I hope I don't see you there. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, if you, if you are looking for a plant-based nutritionist or doctor, you can always look on plantbaseddoctors.org. Uh, that can um, uh, lead you to hopefully someone who can, who can help. Absolutely. Okay, another question. Um, someone is saying, where can you find white sweet potatoes? Saying they've never seen them before. Yeah, I've got them at just at Kroger. So we, I, I, they're in the organic section, so it's a little bit of a smaller section. But uh, yeah, right at Kroger. And I was at the Kroger in Brighton. Very nice. Well... It looks like that's all the questions as of now. Does anyone else have any more questions? Speak now if you have anything to ask Chantal. It 
doesn't look like it. it looks like a lot of people are loving your your presentation. Let me see. Um, oh, Lori is saying she juices kale stems all the time and steams beet greens all the time. So there's some good tips on how to use those greens. Oh, Sandy is asking, what are more potassium based foods? Yeah, so potassium, uh, as far as uh, yeah, fruits and vegetables go, um, more of the, I mean, a lot of fruits and a lot of these whole plant foods are going to have some sort of potassium in them, but the ones that are really high in potassium tend to be like orange, yellow and, um, orange and yellow and kind of red color and that end of the spectrum. So you can think, um, oranges, apricots, um, beets, um, melon, cantaloupe and things like that. But also beans are a really good source of potassium as well. So, uh, that's a good place to go. Very nice. That's cool thinking of it as like based on color. It's a good yeah. tip. Um, yeah, well, it's bananas too, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody course. knows that. <laughs> it's seeming like that's all the question. Oh, um, personal question. Where do you get your B12? I get my B12. Oh, funny. I have it right here. So we, we get these, uh, compliment plus actually Dr. Uh, Dr. Khan, I don't know if you're going to zoom in on these. Dr. Khan recommended these to me. Uh, they're essential vegan nutrients. Uh, it's called compliment plus it's a, a multi, um, vitamin dietary supplement that's got B12, D3, DHA, and EPA. Those omega-3 fats, iodine, uh, vitamin K2, zinc, magnesium, and selenium. So we can get, you know, all the nutrients that we need from a whole food plant-based diet. But, um, you know, it, it, sometimes it can be hard to get everything in. And especially, obviously, the B12, um, we absolutely need that. And D is really important in these winter months in Michigan. So you don't need necessarily all the rest of those, but um, it's a nice and easy, um, really good quality supplement too so um yeah if anybody wants to use that as well i don't endorse them i don't get any money for that but i definitely <laughs> recommend them <laughs> um sandy says oh could you just repeat the name brand of that oh yeah it's compliment plus compliment plus okay um, and Sandy's also saying, does this disagree with the longevity paradox guidelines? If you're familiar with that, I'm not entirely I'm sure. I'm not that familiar means. with the longevity paradox guidelines, uh, but there's definitely lots of research to show that whole food plant-based eating is really great for longevity. And one example of this is, uh, the blue zones. So blue zones are geographical areas of the world where people are statistically living longer, healthier, and happier lives. So they've got the majority, the most centenarians, you know, people living over 100, uh, free of chronic disease in these areas like Okinawa, Japan, um, Loma Linda, California, um, Nicoya, Costa Rica, um, a place in, I think, Greece or Italy as well. And so uh, researchers went into these areas to figure out what they were doing and why are they living so long? Why are they, how are they living so healthfully? And what they found is that they're practicing a lot of lifestyle medicine behavior. So things like getting adequate sleep, connecting with others, um, having positive relationships, avoiding toxic substances, getting uh, regular exercise, uh, as well as, of course, eating predominantly whole plant-based foods. So people in the blue zones, those, you know, people that are, um, you know, most centenarians in these areas free of disease are eating 95% or hundred percent whole plant-based foods. And one thing actually, for those who, um, checked out Dr. Gregor's Q&A. Um, he mentioned that Okinawa, Japan, their diets are like 70% uh, purple sweet potatoes, actually. So great idea to include those sweet potatoes. So yeah, I haven't heard, sorry, I have not heard of the longevity paradox that you're speaking of. I'll, um, maybe I'll check it out, but uh, that's the best answer I can give. Um, Sandy just said a little bit about it. She said it's by Stephen Gundry, who's a heart surgeon, and he talks about the Blue Zones eating as well and was on PBS about a week ago. Stephen Gundry is the name. Yeah, if you wanna look that up. Cool. Okay. I just wrote thanks that down. For bringing that, yeah, thanks for bringing that to our attention, Sandy. Okay, it looks like the another question we have is, can you substitute brown rice in place of quinoa? Um, 
You could. You absolutely could. I I don't know how good it would be. I would recommend farro as the second grain farro. If you haven't tried it, it's similar to brown rice, but it's like heartier. It's chewier. It's better for a salad like this. So I would do a farro first off, but then you could try brown rice as well. Absolutely. I second farro. It's absolutely delicious. Um, Eileen says, please repeat info on potato resistant starch. Yeah, so when potatoes cool, they cre it creates a, more of a resistant starch. And so what that means is that it's just digested a little bit more slowly and doesn't spike blood sugar quite as fast. Hmm. Very nice. Oh, Jody is just saying, please check out Dr. Greger's most recent nutri nutritionfacts.org video regarding Dr. Gundry. So I guess, yeah, we can all learn more about um, him and the longevity paradox on Dr. Greger's most recent video. I can't wait to watch that. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I know we're all big fans of Dr. Greger. Okay, well, it's looking like that is all the questions and it's nearing 8 p.m. Oh, nice. There's just another comment saying that Japanese sweet potatoes are great for croutons in salads if you air fry them. They're nice and crispy. That sounds good. It's a new fun recipe. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much, Chantal. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm sure we'll all be going to try these recipes for ourselves. And thank you so much, Kristen and the Wayne Public Library. I don't, do you have anything else you'd like to say, Kristen? I'm just thank you so much, Chantal. The presentation was fantastic. Um, the camera work, so yay, Marshall. Yes, thanks to the cameraman as well. <laughs> the man behind the camera, Marshall. <laughs> so, yes, thank you so much for doing this. I uh, really appreciate it. And a lot of very good information. A lot of very thank good you. information. That was great. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for great. joining us, everyone. Have a great night. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Eat Bye. more plants. <laughs> Eat more plants. <laughs>